One cherry phosphate. One cherry phosphate. Hey, buddy, I've got a broadcast to do in a few minutes. Will you please hurry with my sandwich? Why don't you eat after the broadcast? Because I'm hungry now. Get the sandwich. Okay, Mr. Benny. What kind was that again? A tuna fish and peanut butter on rye bread. <laughs> oh, yes, with an egg in it. The egg goes in my malted milk. Now hurry, please. Oh, hello, Don. Oh, hello, Jack. Think I'll have time for a bite to eat before our broadcast? Yes, if we can get a little service here. Sit down. Okay. <laughs> well, there goes my new straw hat. <laughs> that did it. Oh, that's too bad, Jack. I didn't see it. Is it crushed? Like a pansy in a dictionary. <laughs> Is I had crushed. Well, I'm so sorry, Jack. I, I think I ought to pay for it. How much did it cost? No, no, forget about it, Don. Okay. <laughs> Gee, Chris. <laughs> just think. A few more minutes and we'll be doing our last... <laughs> just, just mail me a check. You know? Hi, Mr. Wilson. What'll it be? I'll have a club sandwich, please. Okay. One clubby for tubby. Come it up. <laughs> and hurry mine while you're at it. Hi, Jack. Hello, Don. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello. What are you eating, Jack? Oh, my regular. Tuna fish and peanut butter. What a man. Just because they name a sandwich after you, you eat it every time you come in here. Well, why shouldn't I? The Jack Benny three-decker delight is very helpful. I always eat things that are full of vitamins. Then why don't they show? Oh, quiet. <laughs> Here's your club sandwich, Mr. Wilson. Thank you. What's yours, Miss Livingston? I'll have a pineapple nut sundae with cherries and lots of whipped cream. My goodness, Mary, why don't you eat something with vitamins? Okay, put some tuna fish on it. <laughs> Mary, you better save all those cute remarks for the program. And incidentally, young lady, as long as this is our farewell appearance, I wish you'd be a little more careful what you say. You mean I shouldn't tell them what happened at Paramount yesterday? <laughs> don't you dare. <laughs> what happened, Mary? Never mind. See? You're starting already. Go on, Mary. What was it? Yeah, what happened? You stay out of this. <laughs> And get my sandwich. <laughs> well, Don. <laughs> oh. It seems that Paramount gave Fred Allen Dorothy Lamour's old dressing room, which is right next to Jack's. Only Jack didn't know that Fred was in there. Only Jack didn't know. Only Jack didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Jack knocked on the door and yelled, Hello, Dorothy. Hello, sweetheart. <laughs> it's very amusing. <laughs> and what happened, Mary? Fred yelled back, Don't come in. I haven't got my sarong on. <laughs> Yes, but he didn't fool me for a minute. But, Jack, I thought you told Mark Sandridge, the director, that you wouldn't make a picture with Alan. Well, we compromised, Don. Alan can be in the picture, but he has to be the straight man. He gives me all the leads, and I give all the answers. Well, that'll be a novelty. The question's getting the laughs. <laughs> I'll get the laughs. Don't worry. Here's your pineapple sundae, Miss Livingston. Thanks. Hey, wait a minute. She just got here. Where's my three-decker? Bill's putting a poop deck on it. <laughs> Don't get fancy. Just bring it in. <laughs> Hiya, kids. You better step on it. We'll be on the air in a few minutes. Oh, hello, hello Phil. Phil. Hi. Hello, Don. Well, look who's on time tonight. What's the matter, Phil? Does your conscience bother you because this is our farewell program? Holy smoke. Is this our last broadcast? I better start saving my dough. <laughs> yes, maestro. You have about 30 minutes left to get an annuity. <laughs> so make it snappy. What'll it be, Twitch? Hiya, bub. Just give me a glass of water. Glass of water? Okay. Put some bromo in it. I thought so. <laughs> a bromo seltzer, eh? One Phil Harris special. Coming up. <laughs> they know you like a book, eh, Phil? Hey, fella. Hey, are you Jack Benny from the radio? That's me. My program goes on just a few minutes. Yeah, I heard it last week. Oh, you did? But I didn't like it. <laughs> That's too bad. You know, I can't please everybody. Yeah, especially me. Well, uh, so long. I'll be listening. <laughs> 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 
Goodbye. I'm going to worry whether, whether he likes me or not. Here's your sandwich, Mr. Benny. Well, it's about time. Give me that malted milk, too. Okay. Boy, am I hungry. Say, uh, Jack, I better run along upstairs. I'll see you in the studio. All right, Don. Well, I'll be darned. Hey, buddy, I ordered a tuna fish and peanut butter. Well, what's the matter? This is tuna fish and peanut brittle. <laughs> a fine combination. Well, we're all out of peanut butter. It's a nice time to tell me. Bring me something else, then. Bring me a turkey sandwich. Okay. One turkey for jerky. Coming up! <laughs> Now, see here, young man, I'm a very good customer, and if you think that Pardon I'm... Pardon me, mister, is this seat taken? No, sit right down. Hey, Jack, it's getting late. We'd better get out of here. Yeah, come on, Jackson, we'll be late for the broadcast. Oh, I think I got time to eat a sandwich. Pardon me, mister, what time is it? The time? Yes. I don't know. Hey, Eddie, what time is it? I don't know. Hey, Bill, what time is it? I don't know. Hey, Sam! Never mind, I'll eat after the program. <laughs> come on, Mary, hurry up, Phil. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with Down by the Ohio. You know, ladies and gentlemen, a great many desserts are outstanding for one single quality. Some you remember for their delightful taste, others for their tempting appearance, their simplicity, or their low cost. But when it comes to Jell-O, there's a dessert that has everything. Color, yes, color so gay and inviting that Jell-O is a joy just to look at. Flavor, extra rich flavor, as downright refreshing as the fresh, juicy, ripe fruit itself. Ease and speed, for Jell-O dissolves instantly and sets quickly. Economy, because one package, costing only a few pennies, serves the average family in generous style. And last but not least, variety. For with Jell-O, you can enjoy any number of novel and satisfying desserts. So be sure to keep a goodly supply of Jell-O on the pantry shelf at all times. Then you'll always be ready to serve family and friends their favorite treat, Jell-O, the dessert that really has everything. played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is only fitting that on this, our last program of the season, I should pay tribute to the man who has guided us through the past 36 weeks. Oh, don't bother, Don. <laughs> A man whose spirit and leadership has made this program what it is today. Oh, anybody could have done it. Maybe. <laughs> Continue, Don. A man whose buoyant and sparkling personality has been reflected into each and every one of us. I have so much of it. <laughs> Go ahead. A man whose age and experience has proven invaluable to us younger members of the cast. That one he could have left out. <laughs> oh, well. So here he is, folks, the old Mother Hubbard of the Jell-O program, Jack Benny. <laughs> Uh, Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking. Hmm, old Mother Hubbard, that's a fine introduction on Father's Day. <laughs> Don, as long as you started out so beautifully, why didn't you finish with something sentimental like, uh, here he is, folks, the genial skipper of the good ship Jello, Jack Benny. Now, that would have been swell. Well, to tell you the truth, Jack, that sounds a bit too corny. Oh. Well, now that you mention it, it does sound a little like one of Phil Harris's mental nuggets. <laughs> There you go again. Oh, boy, am I glad this is the last broadcast. You are? Yeah. Next week, I'll be out on the road playing those one-night stands where people appreciate me. Phil, you stay in a town longer than one night and see what happens. <laughs> so you start on the road next week, eh? What's your itinerary? Plain suits for the boys and a sport outfit for me. <laughs> Well, that was my fault. <laughs> Phil, an itinerary means your route. Uh, what towns you gonna play? Oh, well, why don't you come right out and ask me instead of ringing in them new words? 
New words. Phil, the word itinerary is very common. I learned what it meant when I was in the third grade. You learned to shave there, too, didn't you? <laughs> Mary, I wasn't in third grade that long. Go on. They had to give you election day off so you could vote. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Keep it up. I suppose I had rheumatism when I was in the third grade. You spent your lunch money on liniment, if that's what you mean. Now, cut that off! <laughs> you never stop, do you? <laughs> ah! Mary, if I'm a big dodo like you try to make me out, how come I'm the star of this program? Because you're a great comedian, you have a marvelous personality, and you know show business from A to Z. Well, thanks. It's more like it. Say, Phil. Oh, brother. <laughs> now, don't spoil it. Say, Phil, as I started to ask you before I was sent back to third grade, uh, what's your route? What, what town's you gonna play? Well, tomorrow night we open in San Bernardino, then yeah. we go to Santa Barbara, uh -huh. then Long Beach, then San Diego. I see. Then the following night we go to Fall River, Massachusetts. <laughs> Fall River, Massachusetts? How are you going to get there in one night from San Diego? I don't know. Is it much of a drive? <laughs> you hear that, fellas? What a schedule. That'll be a fine vacation touring the country with those 18 downbeat derelicts. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Don, uh, what are you uh, planning to do on your vacation? Take a trip somewhere? Well, Jack, this may come as a sort of a surprise to you, but... Uh, I'm going to make a picture for Harry Sherman at Paramount. It's a Western. Oh, well, I'll be darned. So you're going to make a Western, eh? Are you going to ride a horse, Don? Yes, sir, and you ought to see that animal. It's a beauty. So was Jack Straw Hackle. You sat on it. <laughs> yeah, 450. Well, tell me about your picture, Don. Uh, is it an interesting story? Oh, very. You see, I am Sheriff Slim of Rattlesnake Gulch, and there's a mob of outlaws that come in town one night to rob the bank. Rob the bank, eh? Yeah, but I'm having the story changed uh, so that now they break into a grocery store and steal some jello. Oh, oh. That makes me fighting mad. <laughs> well, I should imagine it would. What's a bank, huh? So what, um... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so what, uh, what happens, Don? Well, I jump on my horse and follow the outlaws to their hideout. I see. And I'm almost within sight of them when suddenly my horse goes lame. Oh, that's too bad. So I continue by foot. <laughs> Don, you forgot to get off. <laughs> and what happens next? Well, to make a long story short, I capture the bandits, bring back the jello, marry the grocer's daughter, and we have six delicious children Don't named... tell me, don't tell me, I can guess. Imagine a kid named Lemon Wilson. <laughs> well, it sounds like a fascinating story, and I wish you luck, Don. And now, ladies and gentlemen, going from Buck Wilson Rides Again to our vocal interlude, uh, Dennis Day, our young tenor, will offer... Uh, Dennis isn't here yet. He isn't? I think he'd be on time for our last program. Look, Jack, there he is, sitting out in the audience with his mother. Where? See that lady with the little boy on her lap? <laughs> well, I'll be darned. Hey, Dennis, what are you doing out there? I'm watching the program. Well, get up here. You're on it. Okay. Come on, Ma. Hmm. Would have to bring his mother with him. Oh, Jack, it's our last show. What do you care? She's always got a chip on her shoulder. The old... Oh, good evening. <laughs> good evening, Mrs. Day. Good evening, Mr. Benny. I'm so happy to see you. Well, you certainly don't look it. You see? You see what I mean? You see? There. Oh. You know, Mrs. Day, I don't like to say this, but since you've stayed away from the program, Dennis and I have been getting along fine, and he's improved tremendously. He's got more volume to his voice, more assurance, and more poise. Then why don't you give him more money? Because he's young yet. That's why. Shirley Temple made a million dollars before she was 10 years old. Shirley Temple? Yes. Well, hang some curls on your brat and we'll dick her. <laughs> now, look, Mrs. Day, give me a little credit. I've developed your son into being a first-class comedian. Then he ought to have more jokes to tell. 
Oh, now you want jokes for them. Well, for your information, Mrs. Day, there are just so many jokes in our script. And when this pack of wolves come in here Sunday night, your lamb is lucky if he gets to sing. <laughs> and now, Dennis, how about a song? Okay. Gee, Mr. Benny, you're not a bit afraid of my mother, are you? Your mother? No. The woman don't live that you're afraid of, eh, Tiger? Mary, I don't like those nicknames. Go ahead and sing, Dennis. Mrs. Day, will you please take your seat in the audience? <laughs> The live long day The way that lovebirds do For there were two of you Then this tragic thing That called your poor little mate away And only you remain To sing a blue song's a tender thing that wasn't meant to sing along. Blue lover, still singing for your maid, but it's your fate to wait alone. Once there was of you singing to the dawn. What can a lover do when his love has gone? Lover, your song becomes a that lovers die alone. That was... That was Blue Lovebird from Lillian Russell, sung by Dennis Day. A great song from a great picture. By the way, Dennis, did you see the picture? Yeah. And I was wondering, Mr. Benny, do you think Alice Faye on the screen was as beautiful as the real Lillian Russell? So they say. Of course, I never knew Lillian Russell. Uh-huh. <laughs> Mary, I'm warning you. I suppose I knew Diamond Jim Brady, too. If you did, you didn't get any on you. <laughs> Mary, I was just about to make an announcement concerning our cast next year, and a certain clever kiddo may be cut out. Now, sit down. Yes, Mr. Benny. Hmm. Yes, Mr. Benny. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, before we conclude this final broadcast, I would like to announce that on Sunday, October the 6th... Mary, go away. We will return to the air for the same sponsor at the same time and with the same cast. Mary, Phil, Don, Dennis, Andy, and Rochester, who is now touring in vaudeville. Incidentally, Jack, who's taking over our summer show? Has it been settled yet? Uh, yes, Don, the Aldrich family is going to move in for three months. As a matter of fact, young Henry Aldrich is dropping in here in just a little while. I want you all to be very nice to him. He'll probably be, be scared stiff in front of a microphone. Huh? Scared in front of a microphone? Why, Henry Aldrich is a veteran in radio. Why, he can't be. He's just a kid. Sure, but he's had his own program for the past two years. <laughs> Gee, he's funny. Funny? Does he, uh... Does he do comedy? Haven't you heard about him, Jackson? Why, that kid's a riot. He's terrific. He is? And he's young, eh? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, and you want to watch out for that boy. Remember the old saying, make way for tomorrow. Well, if he thinks he's coming out here to steal my... Oh, I'm not worried. But then... What's my sponsor thinking of putting another comedian in my place? Now, take it easy, Jack. The boy won't hurt you. He's only taking your place for three months. Oh, that's right. 
A lot can happen in three months. What do you mean? Well, suppose at the end of the summer, Henry Aldridge goes to our sponsor and says, Look, I did all right on the summer show. Why make a change? What? Why not keep the Aldridge family? But... Why let go of a good thing? Yeah, what do you need with Benny? Why the little double-crosser? <laughs> I'll punch that Aldridge kid right in the nose. Now, Jack, don't get excited. The kid doesn't mean any harm. Then why is he trying to put me out of work? Especially at my age. <laughs> Ooh, my back. All of a sudden, you're old and feeble. Oh, no, I'm not. Well, fellas, that's the way they want it, all right. Heaven knows I try to entertain the American public. <laughs> but that's life, I guess. It's life. Jack, what are you talking about? You'll be back on this program next October. Don't try to soften the blow, Don. I can see the handwriting on the wall. Thank heaven I've saved a few pennies. Ye gods, have you got that fortune in pennies? <laughs> No time for jokes, Mary. And I think that a little squirt like that Aldrich kid can come along and come in and take away all that I've built up through years of constant... Come in, come in. Well? Hello, Mr. Benny. I'm Henry Aldridge. Yeah. Oh, you are, eh? <laughs> hmm. He got a nice hand there, didn't he? Yeah, that's the public for you. Fickle. A little while ago, they were doing that for me. Well, young man, you can very nicely get right out of this studio. Get out of this studio? Why, our sponsor sent me I don't care what our sponsor did. You don't start working on this program until next week, so scram. Yeah, but I flew all the way here from New York just to be on your show tonight. I don't care if you did. Get out. But Mr. Buddy... Got nothing. Get out before I throw you out. What's going on here? <laughs> You know what's going on. Teach you to take my job away. Look at him standing there. You're so darn funny, Aldrich. Why don't you go ahead and tell a joke? Go ahead, make me laugh. Well, gee whiz, Mr. Benny, I can't understand all this. I came all the way to, from New York to be with you tonight. Who cares? I'm bewildered. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody told me you were such a nice fellow. I heard a little bit about you too, buddy. Now, please get out of here. Oh, Jack, you have to fall for everything. We were only kidding you. Why, of course, you don't have to worry, Jack. It's just a rib. Rib nothing. I can look right at that boy and see he's got talent. <laughs> Can't pull the wool over my eyes. Hair either. Quiet. <laughs> I'm worried enough. Oh, wake up, Jackson. This kid isn't trying to take your job. But my goodness, Mr. Benny, I, I, I think you're the greatest comedian in the world. You're my ideal. I am, eh? Honest. Why, I'd rather go without supper than miss you on Sunday night. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well. Oh, I always listen. Why, I know all of your stuff by heart. Oh, uh ho! -huh. <laughs> Put up your dukes! Put them up, Ken! Jack, Jack! Grab him, grab him! Jack, what's the matter? with you. Calm down. Calm down? You just heard him admit he was stealing my stuff. Oh, no. You misunderstand me, Mr. Benny. All I meant was that uh, you're so funny that I can't help but remember everything you do. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, and I'm sorry I made that pass at you. <laughs> so you uh, think I'm pretty funny, eh, kid? Yes, sir. I think Phil Harris is very amusing, too. Oh, you do, eh? But when it comes to class, you got him beat a mile. Well, Henry, I'll have to admit that Phil is a little corny. Oh, you're both corny, but you have more finesse. <laughs> now, look, Henry. See what I told you? The kid's a panic. <laughs> yeah. Now, look, Henry, there are a couple of rather personal things I want to talk to you about. I'll tell you what, let you and I run down to the drugstore. I want a sandwich anyway. I'll talk to you there. Okay, well, so long, everybody. So, so long, long, Henry, so long. Good luck on your summer show. Gee, thanks. Goodbye, Mary. Give me a kiss. Kiss Henry. Oh, so long. <laughs> I'll see you later. Come along, Henry. Okay, Mr. Penny. 
Well, Henry, now here's, here's what I want to talk to you about. You see, I do a comedy show nine months out of the year. Now, you're coming on for the summer, and I think our audience would like a contrast. What do you mean, Mr. Benny? Well, why don't you do a dramatic show or read poetry or something? Well, but you see, the Aldridge family has been very successful on the air. We want to continue with it. Oh. <laughs> but, Henry, people get tired of laughing all the time. Why don't you introduce a serious note? You know, make people cry. Cry, Mr. Benny? Sure, that sob stuff goes over big. I smell a rat. <laughs> oh. Well, look, Henry, here's another idea. Have you ever considered doing a sort of an adventure serial? Something with suspense and action. For instance, look, you can be lost in the jungle. Savages and wild animals will be after you. know, make a real thriller out of it. No comedy, eh? No, not in the jungle, Henry. Well, I don't think our sponsor would like that. Oh. Well, here's the drugstore. Let's go in and have something. Look, Henry, don't you want to show the sponsor how versatile you are? I want to get laughs, Mr. Benny, just like you do. Oh. Hey, buddy, give me a tuna fish and peanut butter sandwich. Okay. Let's try it again. <laughs> Now, look, look, Henry. Henry, let me paint a picture for you. Say, for instance, you're lost in the jungle, and week after week, people will be tuning in to find out what's happening to you. They're worried about you. They'll be on edge. Did the golden dragon get Henry, they'll say. Or have the cannibals got him? Think of that. I'll have a chocolate soda. <laughs> but Henry... Uh, vanilla ice cream. Now, look, Henry, forget about the jungle. Here's another idea for you. You're an office boy on a big new city newspaper, and you're just dying for a break. You want to be a reporter, see? Uh-huh. Well, one day there's a big fire in the building next door, and Millicent Mandalay, the girl you're going to marry when you're 21, is trapped in this burning building. You hear her screaming, Henry! Henry, help me! Help! No soap. Claire, uh -huh. Henry, listen. So hearing her cries, you dash right into the blazing inferno. Think of it, Henry. Flames to the right of you. Flames to the left of you. I tell you, Henry, this is the time. And now here's our recipe for keeping as cool as a cucumber this summer. It's a swell new jello recipe called Cucumber Pineapple Salad. Why, there's an even breezy, refreshing sound to the name itself. And believe me, here's one time when there really is something in a name. Tiny diced pieces of crisp cucumber, golden wedges of juicy pineapple, and clear emerald lime jello. Yes, sir, it's enough to make the laziest summer appetite perk right up and say more. And better yet, it's so simple and easy that it's practically making itself. Just prepare one package of lime jello in the usual way and chill until slightly thickened. Next, fold in a cup of diced cucumbers and one slice of canned pineapple cut into wedges. If you use fresh pineapple, be sure to cook it. Then mold and serve on lettuce. And there it is, friends, a bright, colorful salad with a grand, tantalizing taste. Just the thing for warm weather meals, which must be light yet delicious. So tomorrow, enjoy this new Jell-O salad, a delightful combination of cool, tingling cucumbers and golden pineapple, tucked into a glistening mold of tempting lime Jell-O. This is the last number of the last program in the current Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next October 6th at the same time. Meanwhile, I hope you will all enjoy The Aldrich Family, starring Ezra Stone, beginning next week. Before signing off, I'd like to thank our listeners everywhere and the members of my cast for their splendid cooperation. I would also like to thank my authors, Bill Morrow and Ed Boulogne, who worked with me in the preparation of my material. And oh yes, I uh, think I uh, better thank Ezra Stone, too. You're welcome, Buck. <laughs> well, good night, folks. See you next fall. <laughs> Next Sunday to the Aldrich family, same time, same station. This is the National Broadcasting Company.